Let's talk about South Carolina first, though. The Confederate flag is set to come down now in just a matter of hours. Yesterday, in front of press, backed by dozens of lawmakers and with family members of those killed at Mother Emanuel Church, Governor Nikki Haley made good on her promise to remove the Confederate flag. With that, I am proud to say that the bill has been signed. I do want to also acknowledge these nine pins are going to each of the nine families of the Emanuel Nine. That was Governor Haley yesterday. Today now at 10 o'clock in South Carolina, highway patrol members will remove the flag that will be displayed at a nearby museum. In a sign of how quickly things could change, the NCAA has indicated for the first time in 15 years, the state will be able now to bid for a championship game. It could not before because of the flag. And other places across the country are following South Carolina's lead. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrew has asked city council to declare four Confederate statues declared public nuisances and taken down. Joining us now from Columbia, South Carolina, Reverend Norval Goff, the interim pastor at Emanuel AME Church, where last month's attack happened. Reverend, good to see you this morning. Well, thank you for having me this morning. We can talk about the history that's about to take place there in Columbia in just a matter of hours, but I want to start by asking now, 23 days after that terrible day at your church, how your congregation is doing, how the families are doing. Well, the church and the families are keeping the faith and because we are still going through a grieving process, but most certainly in our grief we have been encouraged by the outpouring of random act of kindness from around the world and particularly here in the United States. And we just want to say thank you to all of your viewers for being so encouraging not only to Mother Emanuel and the nine families, but in terms of all of that which we are trying to do by working together to make a difference, not only in the state of South Carolina, but throughout this country. Well, we followed your lead, Reverend, and we followed the lead of, of the families of your church, and we followed the lead of that city of Charleston. And we were talking about this just a little while ago on this show. We, we were all blown away by, by your performance and the grace that you all showed in the immediate aftermath of this terrible, terrible murders. Where did you find the grace in those days? Well, it's in, it, it is in our faith and what we believe and that God has uh, created all of us equal. So whether or not we're black, white, regardless of gender or station in life, we believe that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. And if we are to be forgiven, we must forgive. That does not mean we do not still cry. We do not still have stressful moments and that we are angry on some level. But the good news is, is that our faith allows us to be our better selves and that our faith allows us to, to overcome evil that is uh, thrusted upon us. And for that, we are grateful for the encouragement of this community called Charleston and most certainly to our bishop, Bishop Richard Franklin Norris and the Amy Church and Charleston in South Carolina itself. We must commend uh, Governor Haley and we must commend the General Assembly for moving forward in a positive fashion. I think that uh, Reverend Goff and, and the leadership of the church and the nine families have to be given again the credit of raising this to a level where I think that the flag is coming down on others because of the high moral tone Reverend Goff showed and the family showed because if the reaction had been different I think the all that followed would have been different I mean we've been struggling around this flag a long time Reverend Nelson Rivers that heads my chapter down there and this has been over a decade and the NAACP and others but I think the the tragedy is what brought this about but the reaction to the tragedy I think made everyone have to grow and and I was down there for the initial funerals and I was down there the day after it happened don't underestimate what Bishop Norris and Reverend Goff did because they made it very clear that we're not going to lower the standards of the church, lower the standards of what these people died. They died in Bible class. That's where this came from. The forgiveness came from what they were studying. They were in Bible class. And they said, we're not going to allow this to be anything other than that. And I think it raised a moral tone that this country is indebted to them for. Reverend Goff, uh, you know, it, it, there's such a healing process involved here, basically because you showed the country Reverend Al spoke to this earlier, that 
your faith and other faiths are basically in the forgiveness business. That's what faith is all about. And yet you are surrounded still by a residue of uh, battle flags that fly on private property in South Carolina. And it's not just South Carolina. It's throughout the South and throughout mm -hmm. other parts of the United States. So what lingering effect will there be, do you think, on what happened in this one particular instance throughout the rest of the country? Well, I think it's a tremendous opportunity, not only for the state of South Carolina, but for this nation, uh, how we respond to things that are negative in our lives. I think that as we go forward together, we can achieve a number of things by moving in a positive direction. I think when we have public discourse, when we come into the arena of ideas, we must learn how to bring civility with us. It does not mean we will always agree, but we always can find a common ground that we can move forward on. Let me say this to your listening audience. Young people and older individuals are looking forward to the kind of leadership that will allow us to be our better selves and not to be so negative about our country and about each other. So I believe that we have the access to, to doing better. When we know better, we ought to do better. And we must take leadership, not only in the political arena, but also in our churches, in our mosques, in our synagogues, and in our neighborhoods. We must take back uh, that which we have been given by our parents, and then we have to stop bashing uh, those who are to protect us, law enforcement. Yes, we do have some issues that we must resolve, but we must also remind ourselves that we are still community. We are still created by one God. And when we do this, good things can happen. And I'm looking forward to the next chapter in the life of the state of South Carolina, which I'm a native of, and this country in which we live. Reverend Goff, as you, as you look around you in South Carolina, there are political forces and public opinion which sustained the flag flying up until mm -hmm. now. I'm wondering, as you observe your mm -hmm. neighbors who felt differently, and maybe some who still feel differently than you do on this issue, how mm -hmm. are they handling all of this rapid change? Well, I think we, the rapid change that is coming, one must come to grip with it, and yet still we must not take mud off the ground and rub it in their face. We must allow them to have an opportunity to grow in grace and to understand that that flag era should have never been. And now that it's coming down, we need to forge a path together, not separate and apart. That does not mean we're going to always agree on the issues, but at least we can be respectful and show some level of civility. Take a look at that picture right there. You have Reverend Goff with the Confederate flag over his left shoulder. You won't see it again. That flag's coming down in just a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Reverend Goff, I speak for a lot of people when I say again, thank you for setting the tone, as Reverend Sharpton said, and for your leadership over the last several weeks. It's been remarkable to watch. Well, let me thank you and, and, and Reverend Sharpton and your panel for allowing us to come and to once again, on behalf of Bishop Niles, let me thank the nation and the world for encouraging us here in South Carolina, and particularly Mother Emanuel and the nine families who lost loved ones. Thank you, Reverend Goff, and give our best to your congregation. Thank you so much.